I am replacing my kitchen faucet. Why? Because I hate it. Ugh. So a few years ago, I redid my countertops. I did the concrete countertops, did it myself. It, that was a whole other fiasco. But I had a faucet installed. I had to uninstall it to do the countertops. I reinstalled it. It had a drip. Now, it worked fine before the countertops. Then it had a drip. I replaced it with much struggle, much uh, frustration. And so the one that started dripping, there was like a ceramic piece, I guess like that's part of the valve, and it had just cracked. And it maybe could have gotten a replacement, I don't know. Yeah, if I'm taking it all apart, I just want to put you back in. So that was so frustrating because the, the nuts for the faucet are behind the sink, and it's a very narrow area, so it's difficult to get a wrench in. And I installed the one before, that had been a replacement at some point because when we got this house, like the fixtures were all out days, so we'd replaced it. Somehow I installed it. I have no idea how. I wish I knew how because I had so much frustration, like trying to fit a wrench in there. It didn't really fit. It's a huge nut. None of my wrenches are really big enough. It was just, it was a pain. And so you can buy a faucet repair wrench or something. I was like, I'm going to buy one of these in case I ever have to do this again. And I did not think that'd be a couple years later, which is now, because this sink drips. And I went through so much frustration installing the faucets there. I didn't want to go through all that again, but I've got a drip. So I have to replace it. Faucets are expensive. I mean, at least for what I feel like I'm getting, that seems like expensive, like $150, $200, $300 for a faucet? What is this thing? Is it gold plated? What does this thing do that makes it cost that much? I mean, I could see 60, 70, $80. Sure, great, wonderful. And the one I had before, the one that's dripping right now, I was like, man, these faucets are expensive. I'm not spending all that money on one, so I bought one that's cheaper. Well, look, now I'm replacing it. So buying that cheaper and didn't save me any money at all. So this time I said, I'm gonna get uh, a good brand. I mean, what is good? I don't know. You know, I looked on the internet for different reviews on what is good, uh, but I did not want to go with a lower price brand because I do not want to have to replace this in two years. I want to install it. I don't want it to be there forever or until I, you know, like gold plated comes back and then I'll replace it with a gold plated one. But I don't have to re replace one every couple years because it's frustrating. Now, hopefully this faucet wrench will help and alleviate all these problems. I'm sure hoping so. I'm betting on it. I'm putting all my eggs in that basket. And the other thing with this faucet, and you know, I've let it drip for a while just because I don't want to do it, deal with it. When you know, it's got the pull-out nozzle, the sprayer. You know, you have a button that goes from sprayer to like the regular output. Well, every other faucet I've ever had, kitchen faucet, when you have a sprayer on and you cut the water off, it goes back to regular spray. This one, if you have the sprayer on and you cut it off, when you cut it back on, the sprayer's back. So you get sprayed on in the face with this thing. I mean, like that should be an industry standard that when you cut the water off the sprayer goes back to the normal output. Like, what in the world? So, the one I have, you better believe that when you cut the water off, it goes back to the regular spray pattern. Because, of course, it should. So, I'm going to attempt this thing. I've got my faucet wrench, and hopefully this process goes better than it did before. Because, man, when I did it before, it was like an all-day thing. Like, trying to fit a wrench in there, trying to get, like, it just, it's a tight fit. It did not work well. So, this is a faucet wrench. We're going to put this thing to the test. It's got this swivel. Yep, swivels a little bit. It's got swiveling head, so the, the thought is, you open these jaws, you clamp it onto the nut, and you can turn it this way. It's got this long thing, because the sink comes down far, so you, know, you can't really use a normal wrench. I mean, I did. I don't know how. I don't know how I did it the first time. But hopefully this works, and this will solve most, if not all, of my problems. So what did I get? What did I get after all these hours and days and weeks of research and internet for the perfect, greatest faucet? Well, I got this mowing faucet. And I want you to read what this says. It says, buy it for looks, buy it for life. I was like, that's what I want. I want to buy this sucker for life. I don't ever want to replace it. And you better believe that when you turn the water off, that sprayer goes back to the normal pattern. So I've installed a few faucets in my day, more than I'd like to. Like really, once, at, once I installed the second one, that was more than I ever wanted to install in my lifetime, or at least in this decade of my life. But here we are. So I hope that this one will install well. I hope my faucet wrench will alleviate the problem. We're gonna see because you know then the other thing is you like all you have to clean out these cabinets. So of course your cabinets get full. You have to pull all this stuff out, like stuff you're like, oh, I don't even use this. I didn't even know I had this. Why is it here? Why do I use the storage underneath my sink as a dumpster? It just happens. And you so you have to get under there, you have to reach behind the sink. It's just I don't want to be there. Nobody wants to be there. But here we are. And you know, really like it's really a testament of like it's like, do I just call a plumber? Do I just let them fool this nonsense? But I can't. You know, I, I like to do, well, I like to do most projects. I don't like to do this project. It just seems crazy to call somebody to do it when I can do it quite easily. And I've got my faucet wrench I've never used it. i got to use it. You know, you got to use it once to make it worthwhile, right? So when you get the faucet, 
I've got it here. There are a lot of parts. I'm just going to walk through them real quick. The thing I first noticed was this bad boy. What is this? This is the installation tool to install the faucet. Do, do these not look kind of similar? First, I start to doubt myself. Like, oh, did my other faucet come with this? I didn't know what it was. Well, as soon as I saw it this time, I knew what it was. So I don't think it's me. I think it's my piece of junk faucet from before. So this is handy. And how it works, if you have a screwdriver, I don't have one on hand. You just stick it through here and you tighten it. I like that. That should make this installation a lot easier. There are a lot of other parts here. So check this out. This is the main faucet body. You got the lines, the water lines. They connect to your water lines underneath the sink. And this even lets you know, like, hey, this is a hot one. We don't want you to screw this up. I appreciate that. That's very nice. Now, if your sink is a one-holer, use this little round gasket. Let's say you've got three holes. My sink has three holes. Well, you snap this gasket into place with this cover plate, and you put that on the bottom. Boom. There you go. How do you mount this? Well, this gives you a nut to mount it. It gives you a hose guide because your sprayer, there, see, I've got that somewhere. That is this one. You stick it through this pipe. It comes out the bottom, out through this orange, brassy looking thing. I mean, it's too orange to be brass. I don't know. And it connects into this hose. I mean, it's all in all, installation's pretty simple. This weight, well, you want to connect this onto your, your sprayer hose because when you pull it down, well, this way is what makes it go back up and want to go back in. Uh, some of my research, I don't think this one has it. It has a magnet where it'll kind of like pop and hold it in place. I don't think this one has it, but I've had the weighted ones forever. They work fine. Uh, this is this is your mounting bracket that goes underneath that holds it, you know, in place. Uh, let's see, are we missing any other pieces? Oh, yes, the sprayer head. And all this stuff, it just, oh, there's a little cap on here. I can't get it off. It'll come off, but everything just pops into place. This does come with the old soap dispenser. I mean, it's pretty simple. You come with this body, it, it just screws in there like that. If you have a hole in your sink for that, uh, that's where this mounting ring is. So, you take off the bottle, take off the mounting ring, this goes through the hole, attach this, attach, attach the bottle, and then you just take the top off, fill it that way. Uh, I've had these before, with, they break over time, but this being mowing and you buy it for looks, you buy it for life. Well, hopefully I'll have that for life. So those are all the pieces. That is how they fit together. Now, it's time to actually put it in place. So one of the first thing you need to do, turn off your water. That's your water valve. You have two. I got one right there, one right here. Turn it clockwise. That is off. Open up your faucets just in case there's any water trapping the lines. That way when you disconnect the lines, which would be right here, you just wrench, unscrew it counterclockwise. Pop these things off. If there's any water, if you've opened up the faucet, there's any, there won't be any water trapped in the line, so you won't get any to drip out. I do have a towel under here, just in case. You know, I'm going to be lying under here. I don't know what's under here. I don't want to be lying in any nonsense. And so those are connect, disconnected. The next is to disconnect or unscrew the bolt that's holding the actual faucet in place. And that's like up under there, up under there, hard to get to. But we got some tools, so we got some talent. We're gonna make it happen. I have such a hard time installing this one. I'd forgotten there's water lines on each side. There's two water lines each side. And you can't use a tool on it because you've got the water line in the way. You can't, you just can't use it. And so this is directly behind the basin. And that's what made it so tough to get to. With my handy dandy faucet wrench, made quick work of this. Made it so much easier. If I'd had that, I would have saved myself so much time and trouble if I had that faucet wrench. But with this new faucet, since it's just center mount, I can use this tool because there's no lines running through it. Uh, so, live and learn. But, uh, yeah, this this would not have worked another one. I, I was wondering, like, did I just screw up? Nope. I knew exactly what I was doing, but this line, you just you can't do it. You can't install this bolt before the line. It all goes together in one go. And then being behind the base, and, you know, this, at least in the center mount, even here, a nut here and a line through it, which is between the basins. This is not. So this one's out. Very easy. It's going to be quite easy to get the new one in. So all is well. So the faucet installed, great. And the issue I had before is just that, so this one, the one I installed is a center mount. It's a shaft that comes right in the center of the sink between the two bastions. So you have an area to access it. And it, inst it includes a tool to install it. It's actually very easy. You put a plate on there, you put the nut, boom, it's installed. The one thing, problem I had with the other one before is that it is a three-holer. So you had the water lines on each outside, the main faucet in the middle. And those nuts for the water lines to the, water lines to the actual faucet well, there's a tube on there, so the, the tool that was probably wouldn't work because it's, it's, you know, you need it open-ended, right? The problem I had is getting a wrench in there when there's, like, this much space between the basin and the back of the wall. And it was tight because you need these things tight enough because you don't want it leaking. And that was the issue I had. 
My faucet wrench worked great on that, made the disassembly very easy. Install went very well. The instructions were great. They, uh, you know, step by step, know exactly what you need to do. Connect everything back up, it works great. I love that this faucet, you put the sprayer on, you cut the water off, it undoes the sprayer. Every faucet should be like, there should be some kind of rules or standardization in the faucet industry. Like, how, like, how is that not just a basic thing? That is basic thing. It should be like that. That install went great, but I got a little twofer, a little surprise. So I replaced a toilet flush valve about a week or two ago. And I noticed that my water, I have a whole house water filter right off the main water line. And I noticed it had like, like a really slow leak on the inlet. Super slow. And I thought, oh, you know, you're supposed to change these filters every six months. It's been five years. It's probably about time. So I changed the filter. When I changed the filter, I noticed the inside of it. I actually have it here. I noticed the inside. There's kind of like a crack on the inside. But I thought, hey, it's not leaking. I guess it's okay. Let's see if you can see that. You can see that crack in there. Yeah, it's a little dirty and grody. Well, if you see a crack, that is not a good thing. Let's see. I, can, I don't know if I can find it now. But, uh, so that crack, that crack is a bad thing. And when I put it back on, I cranked it pretty tight. I thought, like, you never going to do it, let's do it right, right? You do not want to over-tighten these things. And I tell you that because when I cranked it tight, it pretty much cracked the bottom to where when I came in today, after changing the faucet just to check on this thing, I see the water, the floor is damp. It's not wet, which is good, but it's damp. I'm like, what, why is it damp? What is going on? Let me back up. You know, slowly, I put a bucket under it, you know? Five gallon bucket, great. Like that is gonna serve me well for months on end, right? I there's like a pin, there are pinhole leaks in the bottom of this, and it's just like misting water. You know, if you if it's a summer day and it's misting, it'd be great. This is winter. I don't want water leaking. That was bad. And so I had to buy a new one of these, and I looked at the old big box store because I wanted one like exactly like what I have, so I knew it'd fit. And I did not check to see if it's in the stock. Usually they say whether it's in the stock. I just didn't check. I just assumed like how many people are buying water filters at this time of the year? We're freaking ever. I go to the store, I'm looking for it, I don't see it, then I see this hole where it should be. I gotta go to the next town over to get it because they don't have any. And I got it, and you know, it's not how I wanted to spend my day. And I noticed, like this one, this inlet, it is plastic. And so when it had that slow leak, this was the side that was leaking, I just assumed that maybe it got corroded, I didn't remember what I was in there, maybe it needed to be retaped, maybe who knows what. And what it is, like, I don't know what was going on. I put, the new one is in. Like, it's done. I went to the town over. I came back. The new ones have a stainless steel threaded insert, like, which is the way it should be. Like, how'd they get away with this? I don't know. But I replaced it. I installed it. There are no leaks. It is great. Uh, you know, the, the inlet's not leaking. This is not leaking. I'm, like, missing out of the bottom. And I wrote on it in Sharpie, because I need to remember this, do not over tighten this thing. Hand tight. Because I, I'm pretty sure, you know, I've been here a while. I've been in this house a while. I'm pretty sure I've done this before, where I tightened it too tight and it made a little leak. I think, it seems to me, I don't know, man. It's been a while. I don't remember all these things. If I've been video recording it back then, I'd have it now to look, but I don't. So that is done. This water filter, hmm, but it's done now. We are leak-free. The faucet works great. And the water comes out, like, there's a fair amount of pressure there. Like, I don't know what magic they're working in there to make it come out with so much pressure. Like, it's like, holy cow, like, this is, what's going on? This is crazy. That's done. The faucet's there. If you're looking for a faucet, we'll check that when you cut the water off, it cuts the stream off. Like, the old one didn't. Like, why? Why? And that one lasted, what, two years? Two years is not enough. And I looked at the brand on it. It was like Project Source. I don't even know what brand that is. It's probably some make-believe brand. And as much as I hate to say it, money up for a better brand. You know, I was looking at Delta, Moen. I think there's some other brand I don't recall now. I went to Moen. Uh, they do not sponsor this channel. If they want to, I'm like, I'm here for you, man. Come at me. I just, I didn't want to get a cheap one again because the one we had before, that was a cheaper one. That, you know, that little ceramic thing in there cracked, which means it was leaking past it and maybe you could replace it. I don't know, man. I just replaced the whole thing. You know, at, at that time we'd gotten like new faucet, new sink, new everything. So we're like, let's just replace it. And this one's like, I'm not fooling around this cheap brand. Like maybe there's a way to fix it. I don't know. Don't care. Let's just get a new one. And this one is great.